Hello. Hi, is this Shelly? Yeah, hi, how are you? Pretty good. This is uh, Patrick with Upco. How are you? I'm great. Still uh, logging into the meeting here. No problem. If you can just let me know once you can uh, see the screen, once you see your site up. Okay. Yeah, I see it. Okay, great. Where are you uh, calling from, Shelly? Uh, we're located in Cleveland. Which part of Cleveland? I know. Um, downtown. Actually. Downtown. Have you been there? Have you been there for a while, or? Um, yeah, I've been with the company for almost six years. Um, our our world headquarters has been here since um, the beginning of the company. So. Okay. You you don't happen to know a uh, Danny Scripchuk, do you? No, I don't. That, you know, I know a couple people. I think that's where that's where your corporate is located as well, right in Cleveland. <laughs> Yeah, the the corporate office is, is downtown, but then we have our we have a couple other offices that are that are in the suburbs. Our automotive division is located in Warrensville Heights, and then um, our paint stores, uh, like regional division for the Midwestern group, is um, in Strongsville. They're both about a half hour from here. Um, but yeah, all of the the corporate folks are are at the location that I'm at. All right. Um, if you wouldn't mind telling me, Shelley, uh, is your role still currently a social media manager? Is that correct? Yes, I am. You know, I do know quite a bit about your company as a whole, but what I don't know, I guess, is about um, if you could, to begin, what I usually ask for is tell me a little bit about um, your role and I suppose what the objective is from a social media and digital perspective, what you guys are trying okay. to do and how you're using either social media or anything website related to you know, basically, if you guys are trying to get more brand awareness, more clients, what the main objective is? Um, we're, you know, our our strategy for social is definitely, um, you know, based around um, strengthening relationships with customers and prospects that are using um, social. We do um, 
some promotions for our sales and in-store events, but we handle um, or we host a lot of exclusive offers um, on Facebook and on Twitter as well. Um, currently, we are active in Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, um, Google Plus, um, and we will be launching um, and Foursquare. We will be launching House um, pretty soon. That's in the pipeline. But um, prior to being in this position, I was working on all of the social platforms for our DIY market. Um, and the DIY is, you know, targeting the the retail customers. Um, but we also have a few other segments that we are um, targeting in social right now as well. Designers, like professional, like interior designers and architects, is is one, and then um, paint contractors is another. So, um, for our design market, we're active in Facebook and Twitter, and then our, for the paint contractors, we are um, currently just active on Twitter. Um, in terms of how that relates to our website, um, you know, we're, I'm not sure how familiar you are with with the, the site the way that it is now, but we recently had um, we recently re launched like a redesign for the site. We currently have five separate websites. Um, so the page that you're on right now, um, right above where it, right above the banner that's talking about the careers, mm -hmm. there's a drop down that says choose a site. And if you hover over that, um, you'll see the five different websites listed. Um, and that is um, the lo uh, lower Lower left, I'm sorry. Oh, lower left, okay. You said under yeah. careers, correct? Uh, no, I... just above just above that where it says choose a site. Oh, choose a um, site, okay. Yeah. Which one do you think, just, just to, it's much better for me, my present, to have kind of a focus. Which one is the most relevant for your sake? Is there one with particularly more traffic or more focus you guys are trying to look at? Or? You know, that's not, I, I don't work on the site itself very often, so I'm not sure if there's one that takes, um, precedence over another. I mean, you know, I can tell you that um, the most opportunity for us is definitely in that homeowners section, you know, trying to gain market share from some of the big box stores. Um, but, you know, a majority of the the business that we do are to, to professional painters. So whether it's a paint contractor or a home builder or even, you know, a government contract for a group that's painting, um, um, like marine equipment or um, anything that's in the water. I mean, I like the Golden Gate Bridge is a good example of something like that. Um, but you know, so in in terms of where our focus is right now, I I haven't really been part of the the website strategy meetings, um, so I couldn't. Uh, nope. I don't know. No problem. Yeah, I was just saying the reason I asked this is because um, I'm sure that you're, I'm sure that you use your social media analytics and data. You look at that pretty closely, I guess. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Do you look much at the actual website, such as the transition of when people go from social media to website, and I guess their path from that sake, or are you completely on the social media end? Um, I'm, I, I focus pretty much on the social path, but, um, you know, when we are directing users to the website, depending on, um, you know, since we have multiple Facebook experiences, um, yeah, I would say that a lot of the traffic coming from social is going to be to the homeowner site because that's um, that's where we're most, most active in Facebook right now. Um, I think we have 120 odd thousand fans there. Um, but then, you know, when you, when I look at numbers that are directing users to the site from the um, architects and designers page on Facebook, those folks are obviously going to the you know, architectural specifiers and designers site, section of the website too. So I think it depends um, because we don't have social platforms for each of these segments. Um, you know, shy of looking, shy of looking to look um, to analyze like click-through rates of stuff that we're we're posting on social. I'm not tracking where they're going from there. That would be something that Megan Vickers is probably, um, I mean, she's not here right now, obviously, but um, I think that that's something that her team would be looking at closer, you know, what the behaviors are once, once they arrive to the site. 
Okay, yeah, that's a great introduction. That's what I wanted to know, just uh, to let you know on our end uh, what what our usual uh, discussion, what this is, is just a 10 to 15 minute capability overview on our end. Um, we're a website intelligence platform that basically does advanced analytics and user engagement, which is basically, uh, it's probably easier if I show you a couple examples. And uh, what, we, what also we provide, which I think would be more relevant in this case, is competitive intelligence to kind of let you know all of the social media trends and how they correlate with traffic rent for your main competitors' websites. Okay. So those are kind of the two things that we're going to be showing here. It's pretty, you know, straight, not a formal presentation, a 10-minute discussion showing you a few capabilities and then discussing potential relevancy for your company or role. Okay. No problem. So to, uh, to begin on that end, like I said, I'm going to be showing our analytics and engagement module. Um, keep it short because you're mainly on the social media end. What our yeah. technology does, you know, traditionally, you know, it's, it's the same with Facebook-specific analytics. Um, when a key action is made on a site, let's say someone goes from the home page here, they come from Facebook, then they go to the products page. Um, mm -hmm. Analytics are storing a record that says this person went to this page at this time and, you know, kind of give a different point of, uh, for all of the paths within their visit. So you guys look at, you know, quantitative data to see how often are people going here, what's the value of each visitor, and just kind of take a look to try to increase whatever your goal is for your site. Yeah. So what our company is doing differently is we're storing about a thousand. If you're on a website and let's say someone moves around for a few seconds on the Sherwin-Williams seal and then types in information, we're storing all of this data as points as well. We're storing every action that happens on your site so you're able to search it and integrate it with your analytics wherever you need. Mm -hmm. To know, for instance, how many people came from Facebook, were stuck on the top right portion of my site, then left. We're storing all that information and letting you search how many other users basically ran into that scenario. Mm, okay. So that's, that's the, from the other end of that coin is because we're storing this information, we're able to, if you want to look at a particular visitor, let's say, who came from Facebook to your site, all of our data is completely playable because we're outputting and showing you guys exactly from the eyes of your customer the experience on your website. So this would allow you, for instance, to see people are coming from this Facebook campaign. Let's take a look at what their average experience looked like or what, you know, whatever your conversion goal is when sending them from page to page. Yeah. So uh, the relevance here, once again, is um, we show, you know, the fact that we mentioned the data first is everything you see in a video, you don't need to come through thousands of them. You can discover things through video, such as why would this person like us 30 times, go to our site, and never come back again. And a lot of times you'll discover site errors, you'll consider confusion, you'll discover a new application that might not be meshed right with your site. So it gives you kind of complete insight into your customer experience to improve and a way to detect any, you know, signs of dissatisfaction without just diving through data. Yeah, okay. So the last thing I'll show... I wish I knew more about the, the tools that we're currently using on the site because um, I'm not sure exactly what we're, what we're doing or what they're, what they're looking at now versus, you know, what you guys are offering. I wonder if... Um, if this is something that they've seen before or not, I'm sorry that. No, I, I know if you're not. That, that's not a problem. That's how I keep it. Free. I'll tell you on both technologies. I'm showing the couple of views. It's all proprietary. We do have patents on it, so maybe it might be something bits and pieces, but not in its entirety. So that's just something. Oh, that cool. Mind, so. The only other example I'll give here to kind of end this point is obviously, especially with social media mobiles, what everyone's struggling with, how to monetize it, how to, you know, make your right calls to action without confusing people because their attention spans are so much shorter. So, right. Uh, so when I, what I'm showing here is just an example. When we talk about recreating the entire experience, we are also the first company to accurately recreate mobile. What this means is what you're going to see in this 20-second example is the actual finger movements and engagement with the site. So I'm just going to let it run for a couple seconds. Oh, wow, that's very cool. So obviously the takeaway there is a normal mobile visit when people are flipping their screens, zooming in and out, moving their fingers. That's not accounted for, and it's uh, the finger movement isn't detectable yet by any other analytics technology. So in our case, everything you see on the screen, playable, is also detectable to say, how often are people moving up and down my screen before, you know, what we're looking for. So. Right. 
So I'm actually going to, so aside from this, we have this all, um, we have this all integrated into a platform. So uh, I guess like traditional analytics, you'd be able to only, I asked you about if you look at where people come from, because you would be able to only look, for instance, at people who came from Facebook, Twitter, you would be able to measure things like what's the average engagement time with our site, only of people who came from Twitter. Let's take a look at a few examples and figure out how we can improve their experience, you know, right, either with right. a more clear call to action. So, But you said you're not too involved in taking a look at their path once they arrive to the site. You're just kind of looking at their exit, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to cut that off in that regard. That's just, you know, point of interest. Um, we can discuss if, you know, someone in your organization or if it's a particular. Let me ask you, so based on what you do, it's all based on social media. Um, is this not applicable on your end? because you're only looking directly on what happens when they're on Facebook? Yeah, I think that at least where we are at right now, um, you know, that, that certainly could change. My, I, I'm still sort of new in my role. Um, I guess I started this position in like November, December, um, and we are in the process of um, still, you know, kind of figuring out the, the processes for, for everything. and. Um, We've recently launched some new experiences, so we've um, still we're still we're a little, even though we've been active in social for for a few years, um, you know the the strategy to keep all of the social under one umbrella is still relatively new to us, and um, we're working closely with an agency partner to kind of help us through some of those growing pains for now. But um, you know, I think that particularly the the rest of this month, so first quarter, and then even into second quarter, um, is still going to be like nailing down, um, you know, sort of our internal process for mm -hmm. um, a lot of the social. So, you know, at this at this point, it's not something that um, that I don't think that would be real relevant to us. But it doesn't mean that it wouldn't um, become more important to us down the road once we once we have a little bit more time under our belts. Would you mind sharing? We work with quite a few agencies. You know, this is usually, we, we offer as a service in some cases, but most cases agencies are. Would you mind sharing who your agency is or is that? Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Um, we work with Resource, um, formerly known as Resource Interactive. They're based in Columbus, Ohio. Um, and they're actually the agency partner that helps support all of our, um, like the entire company website as well. So everything <coughs> .com is something that um, Resource has worked with our internal group um, internal group on and then um, they are now supporting all of the all of our social media efforts as well okay so we're, we okay. and they're they're specifically a digital agency they're um, yeah okay no that's great to know yeah like I said uh, think about all this technology we have a thousand different dashboards and modules and stuff it's all kind of depends on a company need um, a lot of times in the building phase they might want to add it on one page while they're trying to fine-tune it a lot of design companies will say, let me take a look at how users are interacting with these five different layouts we're going to choose. Let's look at that for a week and make our decision more informed, you know, so. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, next week, um, Megan Vickers is going to be back in the office. She's been on maternity leave for the last few months. Um, but she had sort of been part of the digital marketing team since, like, from the beginning. Um, she actually came from IT internally and is, is a lot more familiar with, you know, the tools that we're currently using and then also, you know, was, was, was managing a lot of um, the changes that occurred over the site or uh, occurred on our site with, uh, over the last um, year or so when we, were, when we were redesigning everything. She may be a better contact um, for you guys to, to just learn a little bit more about, um, you know, where the most opportunity for her. For our team would be because I, you know, I, I'm not sure what they're currently tracking or what tools they may already be using, and you know, if, if this could complement something that we're we're already doing, um, that, you know, I'm probably not the right person. To... No, that's that's more than fine. I appreciate. Would you happen to have uh, Megan's contact info, or is that something you'd be able to exchange after our discussion? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, yeah, her last name is Vickers. Um, and let's see, is your, is your email in the invite? It should be, right? Correct. Yeah, I can shoot that over to you right now. No problem. That's great.
Well, on that end, if you don't mind, yeah, I just have a couple more minutes. I'll show the other side. So I understand. That's why I brought up all this. You know, there's no reason to uh, be efficient and use each other's time appropriately. So. Um, the, so the other end of this coin, we have an analytics module, so that's, you know, we kind of discussed that. The other end of a coin is our company, what we do is um, we built the first search engine that monitors every website on the Internet. Um, what that means is, uh, do you have any uh, SEO background by chance, Shelley? Is that something you know, you usually... No, not very much. Okay. No, um, but Megan certainly does. <laughs> okay, good. So the long story short there is um, sites like Google, Bing, where most people are kind of searching around and understanding what their customers are looking for, um, they only have about a fifth of the total websites on the Internet because it's kind of the liability of a website owner to get their attention and get listed. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a large database of every website that we update every 24 hours, and the way we provide this is for companies to monitor what their competitors are doing from a strategic standpoint and obviously adjust in cases where a new technology or social media is used. So um, oh, okay. so this, I'm just going to walk you through one simple example here. Just like analytics, you know, there's a lot of uh, applicabilities, but this is usually the case for a company where you would highlight a few competitors you want to take a close look at. We would be monitoring every week their changes in traffic rank. So if you saw one of your competition went up 40% in traffic, we would also be monitoring all their social media changes and likes and tweets, and I forget what LinkedIn's called, but uh, LinkedIn, Google+, Plus. I don't know uh, the rest of the social media off the top of my head, but we're monitoring to say, for instance, this week your, your competitor went up 40% in traffic, and let's say they had 50 million Facebook likes. Obviously, usually that's a correlation between a campaign they launch, and it's worth you guys taking a closer look at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. That's very cool. Huh. So aside from that, I mentioned social media for your sake, but we also kind of track everything that happens on the site. And basically everything you can see, basically everything you see within a website is all trackable. That's how Google does all their stuff. They store code on a website. We're doing the same thing. Right. So you're able to see things such as headline changes for your competitors. Um, your company could say, I want to monitor. In your guys' case, they might would want to monitor, you know, I want to see when they have a new change to choose a site. And you guys would be automatically notified this week. They changed this headline. They changed this new site, you know. Or even if they used a new technology. If you guys added an analytics or a Facebook tag on your site, it's um, publicly available through your code. And you would be able to see, for instance, my competition's using this technology, um, and this is the effect of it. So that's a long story short of how the competitive intelligence works. And for most companies, yeah. it helps a lot to make sure you're not going to be in the dark if new technologies right. come out or new strategies are working effectively. Yeah, definitely. That's very cool. I, I think that that's definitely something that um, Megan would be interested in. If we're not already looking at competitors, I know, um, you know, just in social, that's something that um, is really important to us because there's, um, you know, so much changing all the time. It, it's good to have your, um, it's good to, have our finger on the pulse to kind of know where things are going and where um, where everybody else is active if, in case in case we're not. <laughs> Absolutely. So at that end, it was uh, Shelley. So it sounded like the best bet on our end would be to reach out. You said you'd send me Megan Vickers or Vickers was the name from. Um, Vickers, V I C K E R S. Yes, and I have an email open right now with her contact information, so I can I will shoot that over to you right Let me now. In. Great. Now, I appreciate yeah. Do you have any questions by chance? I mean, all this, I you know, guess, like you said, more applicable to some of it. Anything you see that used with you directly, or would it all be have to be filtered through another department? No, I think that for now it would, if it, it would definitely be filtered through, um, through Megan until we, um, you know, have a, have a better handle on the process and flow of everything that we're doing in social right now. I think that um, we're so busy just trying to get things approved and up and running <laughs> that, yeah. um, you know, we haven't uh, we haven't taken a real close look at um, you know other metrics that may be available that we're not currently tracking. I think um, that might be something that we'll be looking at a little bit further down the road. Um, like I said, I maybe towards the end of third quarter or fourth quarter. Um, but yeah, for now, I think that Megan would be a great a great contact for you guys to to speak with because she's you know much more familiar with the stuff that we're doing on the dot-com side than I am. Okay, no problem. Yeah, I appreciate that a lot in that case. And uh, 
I really enjoyed the conversation, Shelley. I hope all is well, and hopefully we move forward and set something up in the near future. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. All right. Bye.